is the ultimate revolution. It's to be who we are and not what someone else tells us we should be. It's interesting. Um, if you stood in front of a mirror, or not even in front of a mirror, anywhere, and you got a baseball bat, and you started smacking yourself around the head with it, people would call the guys in white coats, wouldn't they? Crikey, get him away. And yet that's what we're doing all the time. When we express that violence to another human being, or to an animal, or to anything, we're actually expressing it to ourselves because that is us, we are all each other, because we are all this infinite mind. And because we've lost sight of the fact that we are everything and what we are inside is what we uh, externally create, we go around, uh, because of the manipulation, we're like walking, talking movie projectors. Let me put it this way. Our inner self, our state of being, our attitudes are resonating us to a certain vibrational frequency. You change your attitudes, the frequency changes. Hate has a certain frequency. And when we feel hate, we resonate the energy around us that is us to the hate frequency. We feel love, we resonate it to a different frequency. This energy that we put out with this vibrational code within it, created by our thoughts and attitudes, then draws towards it a reflection of itself. Other energy fields, people, places, ways of life, experiences that sync with what we're putting out. Therefore, what we are in here, we externally create. And I came across this uh, symbol here. There's some esoteric symbols and that involved in there, but ignore all them. I'm just looking at the basic concept, which is of a reflection. There was a guy, um, a, a writer called Longfellow. I, I think it was Longfellow who wrote this. Anyway, some tall chap. And, and he wrote a story about how someone drowned thrashing in the water fighting with their own reflection. And again, if you saw someone next to the river doing that, you'd call the white coats. They'd be, they'd be on call all day, wouldn't they? But that's what we do, all of us, all the time. We seek to change what we've created by thrashing at the reflection instead of looking at what's creating it. So when things are happening in our lives we don't like and we're drawing people into our lives we don't like and we're drawing experiences we don't like, instead of saying, why am I drawing these in? What is it about me that's creating this? What is it I'm putting out that's drawing this reflection in that I don't like? This pain in the ass has given me a hard time. Instead of taking that power back and responsibility for what we create in our lives, we look out there for it. Boom, boom, boom. And we're encouraged to. And so we're in a situation where we're looking at the reflection, trying to change what's going on. When we need to change what is being reflected. You know, if you're standing next to a river and you see a reflection of yourself and you don't like it very much, you can throw stones at it, you can cuss it, you can kick it, you can jump in and thrash around. All that external thing which we do in our lives all the time. You're responsible, it's your fault, I'm in this position, out there, out there, out there, externalizing responsibility. But once all that thrashing is around is finished in the river, and once you've um, thrown all those stones in, everything settles down again, and exactly the same reflection is being reflected as was before. Because the reflection is merely, literally, a mirror of what is being reflected. We change inside, we change out here. This is the the thing that we've been pressured, encouraged not to understand. Evolution is very, very simple. Very simple. Goes in this sequence. Experience, learn from the experience, evolve as a result of the experience. If at stage one, we're putting out energy, reflecting our state of being, and we draw in a certain experience as a result, person, place, whatever. If at the point where we don't like the experience, we are blaming everyone else out here. It's your fault, it was Ethel in 1963, it was me mother, it's me colour, it's me sexuality. What is pulling that experience in is not changing, because we're blaming everyone else for it. 
So what happens is, because what's going out hasn't changed, what comes back doesn't change, and we hit these cycles in our lives, and we've all had them, and all still have them, where the same things keep getting repeated. We pull in the same type of person to have a relationship with. We pull in the same uh, situation in, in work. We, nothing ever works in our lives. And yet, when you look at that, what that is, is evolutionary just running on the spot. We're not moving because we're not changing what's creating what we don't like. So it goes on and on and on. Once we take responsibility back and stop looking out here to change what's going on and look at what's reflected out there, then in the same situation we say, hold on a minute, why have I pulled this experience in? What is there to learn? What is it about me that's done this? Okay, got it. At that point, your attitude, your imagination of yourself changes. When that changes, what you resonate out changes, so you start pulling in different experiences that reflect the new vibration you're putting out and not the old one. And when you kind of get into this mode of taking responsibility back, suddenly things dramatically change. And you can evolve ever so quickly. You pull in an experience. Oh, right, what is there to learn from this? Okay, got it. Change vibration. Evolve. Pull in a different experience. What is there to learn from it? Got it. Change vibration. Evolve. And you can move along so quickly in evolutionary terms once you start to open up to that. As more and more people on this planet are as this cycle of change unfolds. Or you can stand here forevermore blaming every bugger else for things that you're creating and we're all creating. And that's an option too, but not a very good one. So what we put out is what we get back. We are in control of our lives. No one else who just kidded that we're not. For instance, I, I, I hear people, you must have heard this, where people go, um, nothing ever happens in my life. It's a, it's a boring. It's a boring my life. Nothing ever happens. Everything I try, nothing kind of works, you know. And then you say to them, well, what do you want to do with your life? And they go, I don't know, really. Don't know, never thought about it. Now, I don't know, really, is actually a state of mind. Therefore, it is a vibrational frequency, and I don't know, really, goes out, and I don't know, really, comes in. Nothing ever works, because I don't know, really. If we can just focus on what we want to achieve and go with the intent, the most powerful thing we can do, what's our intent, what's our focus? This is what I want to do with my life. That intent goes out as a vibrational frequency and it will always bring towards us experiences and challenges that lead us to achieve what we want to achieve. That's where most people give up. They say, oh, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do the other. That's my intent. And the intent then draws towards us what we need to do to achieve that intent. And when it gets a bit challenging, we go, oh, God, well, I'd like to do it, mate, but not that badly. Thank you very much. And we're out of the game. So if we want to be free and we want the world to be free, that's what our intent needs to be. And then the challenges and, the, and what we need to achieve that intent will come towards us. And then we can meet them and all this is over. Because if we keep jogging on the spot, blaming everyone else, this is going on, and it's going to go on into another cycle for a very long time. This uh, idea that we create our own reality by resonating the energy around us by what we think and what we feel has now been scientifically shown to be provable. And what you're going to see now are... What happens to particles of sand and other various particles when a sound resonates across a plate and, and resonates those particles in tune with the sound? Because when we think, we're not just sending out a wave which resonates the energy, we're sending out on a frequency outside of the range of human hearing, we're sending out a sound. Everything is sound. When we think a sound goes out, it resonates the energy around us to that sound. And what you're about to see are some pictures that show this happening when sound is introduced and how sound takes random particles and turns it into astonishing form. And that's how this universe was created. In the beginning was the word, and the word was sound. So what you're looking at here is merely particles formed into patterns by sound. 
Uh, they were all over the place to start with, just in random positions on the plate. As soon as the sound appears, they form into these patterns because um, everything is sound, and it is sound that turns uh, matter and energy into form. Patterns on the wings of uh, birds and insects are all the manifestation of the sound vibrations. Every organ in our body uh, resonates to a certain frequency. And when our thoughts um, and emotions and stress uh, and the vibrations that that causes de-harmonize the vibrational state of our various parts of our body, we become ill. So we think ourselves into illness because we're affecting the vibrational state of the body. And so every time you think and feel, you're resonating a frequency which is making the energy around you resonate to the same frequency. What you give out is what you create. Here you're seeing mini galaxies um, just formed by particles and sound. This is how the galaxies and the universe and the solar systems were formed and continue to be held in the structure they're in through sound. If the sound changes, the matter changes, the energy changes. So when you look at what it says in texts like even the uh, Old Testament, in the beginning was the word and the word was sound. Sound. 